Hello and welcome to The Homemade Songwriter. My name is Austin and if you're just discovering our channel for the very first time, thanks for stopping in. We here at The Homemade Songwriter have one singular goal, which is to help you write better songs. If you want that too, please like this video and subscribe to our channel or toss a comment below to say hi and send us a link to your music. In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick tool to keep in your back pocket to help you write better songs the next time you're sitting down to write or stepping into the co-writer's room. I call it the litmus test. Webster's Dictionary defines a litmus test as a decisively indicative test, usually in the context of a test for acidity or alkalinity using litmus. Now, I'm no scientist, but in that same spirit, this tool I'm about to share with you is designed to perform the same function as a regular litmus test, except that rather than testing the pH balance of a substance, it's designed to test the pH balance of your songwriting. That is, if pH stands for potential happiness, Professional, pro professional hearing, professional hearing, pr pretty hot. Anyway, if you want to improve your songwriting and sound more professional along the way, just follow this simple acronym. The first part of litmus is, is your song lyrically interesting? I submit for your consideration these two songs, both of them about dealing with heartbreak. You know you love me, I know you care. I'm not here to make fun of anybody's music, because obviously one of those songs was a gigantic smash hit in 2010 when it debuted. However, I will point out that that same song simultaneously was the record-setting most disliked music video on YouTube for eight years. And I think that by studying these two songs, we can point to the distinction between why one works really well at addressing the topic of heartbreak, and one doesn't work so well. Now, Baby is pretty low-hanging fruit from a songwriting critique standpoint, but let's take a look at these lyrics. You know you love me, I know you care, just shout whenever and I'll be there. You want my love, you want my heart, and we will never, ever, ever be apart. Are we an item? Girl, quit playing. We're just friends, what are you saying? Said there's another, and looked right in my eyes. My first love broke my heart for the first time, and I was like baby, like 40 times. Almost everyone, unless you're super lucky, goes through a heartbreak at some point in your life. There's a reason that there are a million songs about the topic, and it's because it is the deepest pain that most of us will experience at some point while we're growing up, which simultaneously makes it one of the easiest topics to write relatable songs about. So why do the lyrics to this song fill me with such disgust? It's because it's boring. It's not interesting at all. Are we an item? Girl, quit playing? We're just friends? What are you saying? Now look, clearly this song was designed to do one thing, which was to show off the insane and impressive vocal range of a prepubescent Justin Bieber. And to that end, mission accomplished. But in terms of everything else about it, it's bland, it's repetitive, and it doesn't ever introduce the concept of dealing with a heartbreak in a more interesting way than even Darth Vader could. Meanwhile, let's explore the lyrics of Hello My Old Heart by the Oh Hellos. Hello my old heart, it's been so long since I've given you away. And every day I add another stone to the walls I've built around you to keep you safe. 
Oh, don't leave me here alone. Don't tell me that we've grown for having loved a little while. Oh, I don't want to be alone. I want to find a home and I want to share it with you. In half as many lyrics, we have painted a beautiful and incredibly sad metaphor for heartbreak about how easy it is to suffer through it and just decide that it's better to build a wall around your heart and never give it to anybody else so that you don't ever get hurt again. There's just such a desperation in these lyrics that perfectly illustrates how torn somebody can get between the desire to find a home for your heart and somebody to love you well and the fear over giving your heart to somebody else only to have them break it again. The point being this, if you want to write better songs, the first question you need to ask yourself is, is this lyrically interesting? Is there a better way that I can express this idea in a way that feels fresh or different from how other people have expressed this same idea? If you can start to test your ideas through this lens, you're already well on your way to creating more artistic music. The second part of litmus is, does this song have a thematic melody? Now, let's ponder this for a moment. If I was going to write a heartbreak song, what would the theme of that melody be? Slow? Mellow? Dancey? Would I include a clap track? Do I want people to dance to this song or do I want them to sway back and forth and reflect on their own experiences with heartbreak? Personally, I would opt for a more introspective melody with chord shapes that help to show the sorrow and loneliness that comes with heartbreak. It doesn't have to lack energy, it just has to use energy in the right way. So revisiting our original two song examples, which of those two songs we've been discussing do you think reflect the tone and theme of heartbreak the best? I'll link to those two songs in the description of this video in case you need to refresh your memory, but for me, it is hands down no contest, Hello My Old Heart by the Ohalos. I don't feel like dancing when I have a broken heart. I feel like crawling into bed and hiding under the covers. Here's why this is important. Lyrics are a powerful tool, and the more interesting they are, the more powerful they become. But it's been said that music itself is the sound of emotion. There aren't many things as powerful at conveying a message than the combination of those two things. When your melody matches your message, it doesn't just tell your story, it sells your story. So if you want to make better music, ask yourself this question. Does this song have a thematic melody? The third and final part of litmus is, does my song have universal storytelling? What I mean by this is, is this song relatable? If it's not a common idea or story, did I tell it in such a way as to make it relatable to my listener? A great example would be this. Have you heard the song Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo? At the time of this video, it's been sitting in the number one slot on Spotify's top songs in the USA playlist for months now. It's a song about a presumably 16-year-old girl finally getting her driver's license, but mourning the fact that her high school romance recently ended. And while she was initially excited to get her driver's license because it was going to give her the ability to drive to her boyfriend's house, it now just makes her sad because she uses it to drive around her hometown and reminisce about all the good times and experiences that she had with her ex. She muses in the lyrics, you're probably with that blonde girl who always made me doubt. She's so much older than me. She's everything I'm insecure about. Now look, I have absolutely no business relating to the breakup song of a 16-year-old girl. And yet, like many others, I simply cannot get enough of this tune. I've probably listened to it just about every time I've gotten in my car to go anywhere over the last two weeks, and usually I play it several times in a row. Why? Because the way this song is presented is just so relatable. Just listen to these chorus lyrics. I know we weren't perfect, but I've never felt this way for no one. And I just can't imagine how you could be so okay now that I'm gone. The way that she combines that story with interesting heartbreak lyrics and a thematic melody has drilled this song into my head. I firmly believe the message and I relate the story to my own life in some way, even though I haven't been in high school in like two or three years. The point being, if you want to write songs that people internalize and then share with other people, you have to write in such a way that helps you find common ground with people that you might superficially not have much in common with. I have no idea what it's like to be a 16 year old girl in 2021, but I do know what it's like to suffer your first heartbreak in high school, and because of that, I not only relate to this song, but I can't get enough of it. So do your songs pass the litmus test? Are they lyrically interesting? Do they have thematic melody? And do they employ universal storytelling? Next time you're in the writer's room, ask yourself if your songs pass the litmus test. You might be surprised how much getting into that headspace will help you write better songs. All right, that's all for today. If you're still with us, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more weekly content all about songwriting. We love songwriting, we hope you do too, and we wanna help you do it better. So much so that we've put together a list of 30 free songwriting prompts to jumpstart your creativity and get you writing again if you're suffering from writer's block. You can find that by following the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep writing, and we'll see you in the next one.